In this video, I will demonstrate a technique for IV access in a patient in whom several previous attempts by different personnel failed. While we could use an ultrasound to insert the central venous catheter or a deeper seated IV, such as a brachial vein, we wanted to demonstrate that a simple technique of using an S mark can be very effective for peripheral venous access in most patients with difficult veins. And before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the future Nysaurus videos. A difficult IV access is never pretty. It's almost always messy by definition. We'll demonstrate a technique with an inexpensive and simple aid, the rubber S mark that can help you save the day in patients who have nearly impossible IV access. Can use this one, perhaps. Small veins, very small. Okay. This is a 70-year-old woman with a hip fracture. During the admission in the emergency room, the nurses have tried several times to obtain an IV access without success, as you can see on her hand. So let's see how we can solve this problem. As I examined her lower extremities, I noticed immediately that she was dehydrated, her skin was very dry and fragile with black and blue marks as a testimony to multiple prior attempts at IV access or blood draws for the labs. A quick ultrasound examination revealed several deep veins, including the brachial vein, but short of central venous access, nothing was available for an easy seamless cannulation using ultrasound guidance. In fact, ultrasound is not a great tool to cannulate superficial veins. You need to have some tissue for needle travel for ultrasound guidance. Often, cannulation of the smaller peripheral vein without ultrasound may be the most convenient and quickest way to accomplish an IV access. You can see how low angle she assumes when she approaches the vein, super low angle. Because if you assume any larger angle than that, you actually will not be able to cannulate any of these veins. Here are the five tips that secured IV access that are pertinent to this patient. Number one, consider using S mark to squeeze the blood from the proximal to distal and fill up the peripheral veins so that they become visible and accessible for cannulation. Number two, allow sufficient time for the veins to fill after the application of the tourniquet or better yet, in difficult cases, S mark such as what we use here, particularly with patients who are dehydrated. It just takes time for these veins to fill up. Number three, use a low angle of needle insertion to prevent passing of the needle through the vein, which results in a failure, causes hematoma and makes the subsequent attempts even more difficult. Number four, Consider bending the needle catheter system to allow you to assume a very low angle of insertion into the superficial veins. Now, this is something that is controversial and in the community feed you can see there's a lot of discussions as to whether you should bend the needle catheter system. I personally do it all the time. Number five. Insert the needle into the lumen of the vein fast to avoid veins rolling, particularly in older patients with thick-walled veins. Now, let's see how we can apply these principles to the near impossible vein cannulation video. The first thing we did in this patient is we set her up slightly to allow for the gravity to allow the blood to fill the peripheral veins. We then applied a reverse S mark from the axilla to just below the elbow and we applied a very diligent turn-by-turn -turn application of the S mark moving distally to squeeze the blood to the more superficial veins. This reverse S mark technique allowed us then to use an 18 gauge catheter even in this patient with difficult venous access. However, my advice is to use a smaller gauge catheter such as 20 or 22, wherever large gauge IV catheter is not necessary. Save those veins for later. I hope you find the information in this video useful and if so, please subscribe to the channel and help us grow the channel so others can find this practical information 
that can be used of help to our patients. And feel free to post a comment or ask a question in the comment section. For instance, is this technique still relevant in your practice? And what do you do when you're faced with a near impossible venous access? Until next time.